Hello there, and welcome to my latest video. I guess it's a re-edit video about the JFK hit and all the different things that they're not telling us. People who are involved and whatnot, the real people who pulled the trigger, triggers. But firstly, before we begin, I would like to say check the description section, of the video's description section below. There'll be a full bibliography citations list. And what are we looking at here, you might ask also? This is the JFK files that they were forced to release. The JFK files that they mentioned at the end of that Oliver Stone movie. The JFK files that everybody was waiting to be released. And there's and there was almost 7,000 different file headings. Something like 6,685 files. And this is just what I had a chance to look at while we we're watching this video. And then also whether or not my grandfather may have been connected to the, the actual JFK hit. It's most definitely the topic that got me into being a truther. What woke me up. When I was in high school, me and my brother watched the JFK movie. Where, as much of a disinformation campaign that movie was, it did pose the question, who really killed JFK? And obviously later, finding out about Bill Cooper and the fact that he had analyzed the Sapruder film showing that the driver of the car, Greer, was the one who ultimately got the kill shot. To guys like Jack O'Halloran, son of the infamous mob boss Albert Anastasia who was there that day who saw the power players the night before at a party called the Arabian Nights and again as I said all of this is in the citations description section below and some clips I will play here so let's get on with it I guess to quote Bill Cooper I'll say often in my videos I put it to people you know I don't care if anyone likes me I'm just here to deliver information don't believe a word I say Go out and research everything I say till you're blue in the face and then make up your own mind. Because as I said before, for me, what ultimately set me on the path was that JFK movie. And afterwards, me and my brother looked at each other in shock and horror, even as Canadians. Growing up with that whole urban legend around, did Oswald actually kill JFK? And we thought, well at least I thought, if they're willing to sacrifice a king in this day and age, what else are they willing to lie about? And for years I was an agnostic before I became a Christian believer, and I got sucked into the whole X-Files thing, which was again another uh, misdirection COINTEL pro, like Bill Cooper talks about in this clip I'll play here shortly. This Operation Majestic that was designed to create a disinfo campaign about aliens. And the idea that basically the main reason why they killed JFK was because he was going to reveal to the American public the existence of UFOs, of the cloning centers, and all the things that guys like Donald Marshall talk about. And in addition to that, he pissed off the military by not backing them in Vietnam. He was going to break the CIA up. And so ultimately, it was the trilateral families in the Bilderberg Group that ordered the hit. As I cite with this 1992 interview here of Bill Cooper, probably one of his last interviews before they killed him, not to be confused with the crazy Trump era we're in now that only Bill Cooper could have predicted. And he did. He'd been warning us for 30 years. At least some of us listened. I was in a bookstore one time, and I was looking at the magazine rack. I'm an avid reader, and I'm always in bookstores. And, and this one day, I saw a magazine just popped right out at me, that <laughs> UFO. And I picked it up, and I looked inside, and here is Majestic. All right there. And even, even the people who had been named to implement the plan were the ones who were actually implementing it. Uh, William Moore, Stanton Friedman, I'd never heard of Jamie Chandray, but he was named, and they had brought out a, a supposed genuine document called the Eisenhower Briefing Document, which in reality is a fraudulent document. It's a, it's a fake, and it was created to implement the plan Majestic to uh, either indoctrinate the public on what the government wants the public to perceive is happening or to, uh, to steer uh, researchers away from the truth, or both. So this wasn't it, uh, revealing the plan of Majestic, but it was actually uh, 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 implementing the plan. Implementing you, the plan the against the public. It was a psychological operation against the okay, public. So this is what you saw. Right. So uh, immediately I began, my head began to spin around, and I began to think, God, you know, uh, I, I've got to uh, tell people that they're, they're being manipulated. This is a lie. And it really, if, if the public were using their own intellect, they would know that it was a lie. The executive order quoted for, the, for, for the, uh, this document was uh, 92,000 something. I believe it was 92,447, uh, which is 92,447. 
and it was supposedly written by Truman. But Truman never wrote an executive order higher than 9,000. I mean, even today there's no executive order with the, with the number 92,000 on it. They've been consecutive since, since the beginning. So it was clearly fraudulent. So it's clearly fraudulent, but the public doesn't catch on to this. And uh, here you got Stanton Friedman, one of the guys who implemented the, the contingency plan, Majestic, running around the country telling everybody it's not an executive order, it's a date, uh, September 24, 1947. Um, which it very well could be a date, but it's listed in that document as being an executive order of the President of the United States, Harry Truman. Uh, and, and because of that, it's fake. And, uh, and many other things. But specifically, that is the most glaring uh, proof of uh, fraudulent intent uh, in the document. There are many other things in the document that also prove it's a forgery. But here they are. They're running this contingency plan, and here I am. I know all about it, and here's the public out there biting it. They even ran that thing in the New York Times, mm. uh, like a two- or three-page spread showing all the documents. Uh, so it had tremendous credibility lent to it by that action. And uh, so I decided uh, that, I, that I had to tell the public and uh, get people on the right track, which is the right track is don't believe anybody. Okay. Don't believe me. Don't believe George Bush. Don't believe anyone. You got to go out and you got to get proof in your hand before you can believe anything. And to do otherwise today is is the biggest mistake that anyone can ever make. Um, you begin believing people, uh, putting your trust in them that they're telling you the truth. I guarantee you, you're going to take a ride on a roller coaster you don't want to be on. Mm -hmm. Now this this controversy, and I, I say the very the very understatement controversy. Yes. <laughs> uh, it it also is now extending based on some things that you're revealing uh, into the Kennedy assassination. Yes, in the in the set of documents, which really was literally two or three file cabinets of documents, called Operation Majority, uh, I saw documents which told me what happened in Dallas and why. And uh, basically, what these documents said was that uh, the intelligence community felt that John F. Kennedy was a threat to the national security, which translated into reality means was a threat to the New World Order, the One World Government, which they were uh, actively um, in the process of forming. Was there anything on record that indi indicated that he was out to, uh, well, things that he, he did would threaten that New World Order? Oh, absolutely. He had written an executive order. I don't remember the exact number now, but it's available to anybody that wants to go look it up. Uh, he had written an executive order uh, ordering the printing of United States notes, which would have broken the back of the Federal Reserve, which is one of the major instruments of propelling the United States into the New World Order by destroying our our economy, the basis upon which we live, mm -hmm. um, the basis upon which our, our whole society is founded, is, is being ripped right out from under us. Um, that was one. Number two, he refused to provide air support for the invasion of Bay of Pigs, which ensured that that would be a failure. He had threatened publicly, on several occasions, to disband the CIA and scatter it to the thousand winds. Uh, he had uh, ordered in, in the documents that I saw, he had ordered the intelligence community to prepare a plan to disclose the truth about UFOs to the public. Now, I don't know what that truth was. Could be that maybe there are no extraterrestrials. But whatever the truth was, he had ordered a plan to be prepared that that disclosure was going to be done according to that plan within the following year. And uh, the intelligence community considered that to be out of the question. And uh, according to the documents that I saw, his assassination was ordered by the policy committee of the Bilderberg Group, which is really the secret world government, and was carried out by agents of Division 5 of the FBI, the Secret Service, the Central Intelligence Agency, and the Office of Naval Intelligence, of which I was a part, in Dallas. And it said that the assassin, the man who actually administered the head wound, was the driver of the car, William Greer, a Secret Service agent, who used an assassination pistol built by the CIA for assassinations that was really an air gun um, that fired an exploding pellet or could fire a small hypodermic needle or a poison dart uh, using any one of many uh, different uh, deadly poisons. Specifically, it said that he fired an exploding pellet which contained shellfish toxin. 
and that the act was plainly visible in a film withheld from the public. I looked for 16 years to find that film, and I finally found a copy that showed William Greer turn around and shoot the president. And since 1988, I've been uh, uh, showing that film wherever I'm, I, I'm able to show it to wake people up. It is not our government, though you have to understand, that is doing these things. It is not our government that's failing us. It's not the Constitution or the Bill of Rights that is, that's a bad instrument. It is a group of men who belong to secret societies, who have infiltrated our society and our government at all levels, and are destroying it and subverting it from within. And every member of naval intelligence that I knew who was an officer was uh, a 32nd or a 33rd degree Freemason. And I asked my uh, commanding officer at one point, I said, why are all you guys Masons? He said, Masons are used to keeping secrets. It's part of their fraternity. So if you want someone who already knows how to keep a secret, you recruit Freemasons. Well, later on, I found out what the truth is. The truth is, is you're not going to be a naval intelligence officer unless you are a Freemason or a member of the ancient order that rose across, but you have to be high degrees uh, for that. I think the reason I was selected as enlisted men is because I had belonged to the Demolay Society. Which is why, as a teenager, that's sort of the first level of Freemasonry. That's okay. how they recruit teenagers uh, and indoctrinate them into their principles so that they go right into Freemasonry when they become an adult. Um, so after seeing that and him talking about the Masons that were involved in everything at that level, I figured knowing the way organizations like that work, where if you're high level and you have clout or you have dibs, you have station, you know, seniority as some places would say, where if there was a call for someone to do a hit, in this case on JFK, like we're talking about, getting to the fact that it was George Bush and the CIA who carried it out for the Illuminati families, that's probably what got George Bush his seat on the Council of 13 up until recently as he just died. So Bush got... Carlos the Jackal to do the hit and apparently from what I've researched he had 32 hitters there that day one of them was Woody Harrelson's father who was a hitman who was executed I believe in New Orleans for other murder crimes you'd have to look into his story specifically but the the actor from Cheers Woody Harrelson's father was a hitman who was there one of the shooters at Dealey Plaza 17 shots were supposedly fired that day and ultimately it was a kill shot from Greer the driver. And so since my grandpa was basically one below general, OSS, 33rd degree Freemason, I thought maybe this was how he got his button. Obviously, I can't prove that. But the rest of the stuff Bill Cooper discusses and other people, like eyewitnesses involved, as we'll get to in the end, it was Carlos the Jackal and George Bush who orchestrated and planned the entire operation that day. And George Bush's whole tagline, when asked afterwards, he says, I don't remember where I was that day. If that doesn't set off some warning bells, then I don't know what will. As far as back to other things, like I noticed in the topic of the JFK hit as far as pop culture mythology, really it seems to come down to bad blood with his dad, sins of the father, and the idea that his dad was owned by the mob. They saved his life and they basically owned him, and so he used his son his entire life. Apparently, while JFK was a nice enough guy, his father was a monster and a killer. And in the end, he ended up doing horrible things to his family, including lobotomizing his own daughter.
But I found it funny in, in recent pop culture, shows like Boardwalk Empire, which deal with the gangster era of the time, the bootlegging prohibition time, which Joe Kennedy was a part of. He made a lot of money bootlegging liquor. But Joe Kennedy's dad had also participated in the stock market crash. One of the guys who got that happening, the reason why that short sell happened, the dirty 30s, that poverty, that era. And so in the end, he was then given the task through the mob controlling politicians. He was given the task of rebuilding the SEC, or excuse me, sorry, the SEC. Security and Exchange Commission, basically planning how the dollar works. And Geneva and the trilateral families, they lost the equivalent of billions. They hated Kennedy, Joe Kennedy. But in the end, when JFK was elected, according to Jack Halloran, who we'll get to a clip here of in a minute, Joe Kennedy, who had promised all the, prom, made all these promises to the mob to get his son elected president, he turned on them and told them to arrest his very good friends. Who was one person that was responsible for the death of John F. Kennedy? You'd have to say his father, Joe. And, uh, you got to look at the fact of, of the coldness and the cold heartedness of a man who lobotomized his own daughter because she had what we call today ADD and, uh, and bipolar disorder. What person does that to your own family? Right. And John Kennedy himself would not have lived out his term. If you look into his medical records, he was a dying man. He was dying of four different diseases. They shot him up every single day just so he could function. Addison's disease is a deterioration of your back. He was well advanced into that. He had syphilis and two other diseases that were just, you know, crumbling his body. And his father, would rather see him die the way he died in Texas as a martyr than to see him die as a sick person in the family and put a mark on the family. But also I noticed, like I says, in the show Boardwalk Empire, they make Joe Kennedy out to be like a good guy. Like they always make these gangsters out to be good guys. This all started with bootlegging and the stock crash in the 1930s. And so when when JFK promised to reveal the truth about aliens and cloning centers, some kind of hybridization program, a deal was struck. He was going to expose the fake moon landing that they were planning and the NASA embezzlement scheme that was to come, all for the fake space program that Bill Cooper talks about. Not to mention the fact that he was going to print, start printing the American greenback and take back control of the dollar from the Federal Reserve banking cartels, not to mention him wanting to break up the CIA and the truth about not wanting to get involved in things like the Gulf of Tonkin and, and the Vietnam War. That was it. They'd had enough. This guy who had been promised to be obedient and loyal wasn't. It was basically about sending a message at that point. And uh, now they make cheesy TV shows about it. City, long home to colorful citizens, but perhaps none so blustery as the man called Public Enemy Number One. <laughs> Beginning as a two-bit bootlegger, Alphonse Scarface Capone rose through the ranks of the Southside Rackets to become king of the underworld. Who bit my ass, Pally? <laughs> From his palatial suite at the Lexington Hotel. Capone rules his empire with an iron fist. I'll say he does. Earning millions. Uh, what we discussed last night. Which part? The part I hope you remember. I don't think it's for me in the end. Why not, if I might ask? Well, scotch and rum don't really mix. I am told. Has the moment arrived for serious discussion? Eight kids. I get it up right. <laughs> One short of a ball club. So, number nine's on the way. I thought you were always on the road. When I'm home, I make it count. Another thing that I find is rather tacky or cheesy is the Mandela Effect storylines I've been hearing lately. Recently as such, the idea that it was Jackie O who killed 
JFK. It's ridiculous. And as we're watching this looped video, how ridiculous I can't even begin to speculate on because I can clearly see the woman's face and the sheer shock and terror in her face. I've seen it before. That's the face of somebody who freaks out when gunfire happens right beside them. And when Greer turned around and shot JFK in the face, he was already shot in the throat, as you can see in this as you can see in this repeating video, and J Jackie was looking at him. She's trying to figure out what's wrong. Clearly something's wrong. She doesn't maybe know yet that he's been shot, although she's probably heard gunshots. There was also this Mandela effect thing saying that there was six seats in the car, then there was four seats. One of those clips is from a movie that started that rumor. But clearly Jackie O is not responsible, as you see the sheer shock and terror on her face like a gun went off in the car and she suddenly climbed out the back way and was told to stay put and she quietly shut up and probably spent the rest of her life living in fear for her kids jfk was dying of two or three different diseases he wasn't going to live out his term and so it was just a sacrifice play it was convenient a guy who was promised to do what they said did the opposite and they decided to make an example and no president since then has has argued with Bilderberg or the trilateral families, the Illuminati bloodlines. So all that being said, I'll call it a video and I'll leave it at that. Maybe I'll play a little clip from JFK himself. And I'll just say peace out, everyone. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, Man will be what he was born to be, free and independent.